Hello, good morning, everyone. How we doing? Good, good. I want to welcome those of you who are in-house in our Tacoma campus. And of course, we want to welcome our other brothers and sisters in Christ joining us online. Welcome to you too. It's good to see you all. It's going to be a beautiful day here in the Northwest, like 80 degrees. And uh, I made a post on Facebook a couple of weeks ago um, that when it was like 104. And I say this every year, but usually it's later on in the year. And I was like, all right, uh, I'm ready for fall. <laughs> well, I take it all back. Um, uh, you know, high 70s and 80s, I can deal with. Yes, you? How about you? Yeah, good? All right, sweet. Sweet. Well, it's good to be here with you. Uh, my name is Jared. I'm the worship arts director here, and I uh, invite, want to invite you to, wherever you are, stand up as we come before our God in worship today. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, and uh, let's pray. God, how great it is um, to gather together in this place, and, and Lord, whether it's in person, God, or, or whether it's in our, our homes, or our hotels, or RVs, or wherever we're watching from online, Lord, we thank you that we can join together as the body of Christ in this place, and that you can bring us joy today, Lord, no matter what's happening in our lives, God. In the midst of sorrow, you are there. In the midst of happiness and good things in our lives, God, you are there. And so you are the originator of joy, and you are the one who brings joy into our lives. And so today, as we come before your throne of grace, remind us of that fact. Remind us of the joy that can be found in you today. We love you, God. We are here to worship in your name. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we begin today. Let's join our voices. Let's sing. Mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he up in the flood of mortal ills prevailing. He won't He won't ever leave, He'll never forsake us, He won't ever run, He'll never reject us, the faithful one, His love will remain, His love will remain, a mighty fortress is our God, a tower strength. Shout it out. A tower strength never fails. 
unfailing the name of Jesus true and strong no one apart seated. Welcome today. It's good to be with you. We come before our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and when we do so, we have a God that just loves us, a God who cares for his creation, and, and it's not just that his creation exists but that it was made with good intentions and it was made well and that God recreates and brings new life where life has ceased and where destruction happens and occurs. And so we come before our Father and we confess to Him and we pray, Lord, God, we confess to You sin. God, we confess to you our sin, that, that which separates us from you and from one another. God, we have sinned in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. Lord, we ask that you would, you would examine us, you would help us to know and see and understand any and all sin that is within us. God, we pray that as we confess to you, we ask for your forgiveness, and we do so humbly. Lord, we, we honor you as the one who is over all and in all and through all. Lord, we confess to you in this time silently. Amen. You know, the Lord who hears this has a, a profound and unchanging message for you and for me, that your sin truly is forgiven in the name of Jesus. And it's not just simply a, well, it's wiped away and we'll come back next week and we'll do it all again and We'll just keep doing the dance forever and ever. But, be, but know that God truly does make you new. If anyone is in Christ, they're a new creation. It's not just true for others, but it's true for you and for me today and always. You are a new creation in Him. Where there is death, where there is destruction, where there is brokenness, he brings new life. He does new things. He restores to the good that once was. You can trust these words fully. You are forgiven. 
Amen. And our Lord continues to show His grace to us in so many ways. But one way He does that's tangible and that's un- that graspable from for the, the complex to the simple is that He gives of Himself and His body and His blood. And so our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night He was betrayed, He took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it, and He gave it to His disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Christ, broken for you. And after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. May this true gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may it sustain you in life and faith forever. Amen. Through the act of communion, our Lord invites us to come to his table, to come to the altar. No matter where we've been, no matter who we are, He invites us to lay our sins and our burdens at his feet. And he invites us to the feast of his love and his grace and his mercies that he poured out through his son, Jesus Christ. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling Bring the sorrows and treat them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Welcome to Sing out. 
Jesus Christ, to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi kids, I'm Mr. Joe, and I want to welcome you to this week's Kids Message. Have you ever noticed that life doesn't always go the way you planned? Sometimes trouble finds you when you're not looking for it, but sometimes you find trouble by making unwise choices. Like if you borrow something from your older brother or sister, and then you accidentally break it. Oops. Or maybe you're looking at videos on the internet, even though your mom told you not to. You click on something that you've never seen before because it looks funny, and you end up seeing something that you wish you hadn't seen. Or maybe you hear some other kids saying mean things about another kid. Everyone else is laughing, so you laugh too. And then you feel awful about it. Unfortunately, there are a lot of wrong things you can do if you're not careful. When we mess up, it can sometimes feel like there's a big wall between us and God. We may even think that God no longer loves us, but guess what? That simply is not true. In Romans 8.39 it says, For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hiya! Our bottom line for today is God loves you no matter what. Let's pray. 
you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for being with us always. Thank you for welcoming us with open arms when we ask for forgiveness. Please help Mr. Reem and Mr. Carey have a good vacation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. For more Bible fun, videos about today's lesson, and conversation starters for your family, head to the section called Sunday School at Home in today's Kids News email. Have a great weekend, everyone. True and lasting joy is found when we love the things God loves. It is in these things that we see God clearly, how he loves us and how he pursues us. And it is only here that we can truly find joy. Our text today comes from Philippians chapter 2. We're going to be in verses 12 to 18. If you have your Bibles, uh, you can follow along. We're going to kind of spend quite a bit of time in that text today and, and exploring that more. It reads like this. Paul writes, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only is in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. Let's pray. God, we pray today, thanksgiving for your word, that um, the scriptures that you have inspired give us a solid understanding of who you are. God, we pray that uh, you would lead our time this morning in your word, that you would uh, help us to, to hear it as you intend it, that we would speak of it as, as, as you intend so. God, we ask for your wisdom and your guidance. Amen. So, so I love summer. Anyone love summer? Yeah. Like summer is the best. It just is. And especially it's the best in this part of the country. Like, I mean, there is nothing like summer in the Northwest. There just isn't. I mean, we've lived in different corners of the country. There's nothing like it. It's like this is the best summer you could ever have. And one of the things that happens with the best summer that ever has is it's the gift that isn't just confined to like the, those like six to nine weeks, depending on the year. It actually begins like in December because even when you're thinking Christmas or the rest of the world is thinking Christmas, we're thinking we got to book some campsites now, <laughs> right? Like we're, we're in it. We're starting to plan our summer already then. We're booking campsites because we know if you wait till January and February, for sure, they're all gone. And if there are some available, they're going to be next to a highway, it's not going to work. And, and so it starts early. We start booking stuff then and, and getting excited about camping trips. And then, you know, we get to like, like February, March. We might take a, a vacation to get out of the, the, the gloom. And, and we start thinking, man, we should take a vacation this summer. And so we start thinking about, man, what's that trip going to be that we do this summer that's not camping? Because we all know, like, camping is different than vacation. There, there are different types of joy that come from both. 
but they are not the same. And, and so we start looking at that, and we start booking that. And then we get to like April, and our family that lives in other parts of the country says, hey, I want to come visit you guys because you have good weather during the summer, and there's not good weather anywhere else. And you're like, yeah, it'd be so great to see family. And so you get that on the calendar. And then you get into to June, and you start living it, and it's awesome, and it's fantastic. And you get to about the week before July 4th, and you think to yourself, this great thing, this calendar of joy that we have put together has become a monster that will not leave us alone because it feels like I have lived an entire summer and it's not even July 4th yet. And the motto that we have for when it comes to summer, it's kind of in our house, I'll just say, I won't speak for you, but you can nod or 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 smirk in agreement, well, however you prefer to do that, but is, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And, and it's kind of got this, um, it's kind of rooted in this belief of that the more things we do with the more people, the, the more joy and, and happiness we will have. And I just find it so interesting that what, starts out as something that we're so excited that I'm so excited about and looking so forward to can also turn into something that I feel like man you know what would be awesome this week nothing <laughs> I don't even want Netflix just nothing and in this section of scripture here Paul is talking about true joy you know, he's not talking about a, a happiness that comes from more of fill in the blank. He's talking about something different. And, and this is a theme that he has all throughout Philippians, is where is joy found? And so what we're going to do, we're going to kind of go through this today. We're going to do this verse by verse. Sometimes that is scary because you're like, that's going to be a super long sermon because I know how you pastors are. You don't know how to stop talking about one word, um, but we're not going to do that, I promise. All right? So stay with me. Okay. So he starts out here. Therefore, all right, I'm going to do it. But therefore, anytime you see therefore, it means there was something significant that was said before that is in light of that, we're now saying this. And what he talks about before, if you listen to the sermon last week, Pastor Tim shared about this, that there was, um, it talks about Jesus, that even though he was God himself, didn't consider himself as such, but walked humbly, making himself a servant and sacrificing his own life for our life, that we might have life through him forever. And so he says, therefore, my beloved. Now, my beloved, this is super important, all right? My beloved. It, we mentioned this a few weeks ago that Paul has a deep love for these people. He is not writing it as a, like, I'm writing a, a general, like, you know, I don't call them or something. It's not like that, you know? Like, here's a message for all Christians in the U.S. type thing. He's writing it more as, as a, like a personal email type thing, like, hey, this is for you. I know you, I love you, I've spent time with you, we are part of one another's life. We are intertwined, it's not just this, hey, I'm, I'm giving you good advice. It is, I love you and I care for you. Um, and this becomes significant because we ultimately trust the ones that we believe love us. We ultimately trust people that we believe love us. I mean, there, think about it. Is there anybody you trust that you don't think loves you? Um, especially when it comes to you. You know, not financial advice, not, you know, not all this other stuff, not how to, you know, do something, but when it comes to you who you are and how you live your life. We trust people that know us, that love us. 
And it's so important because so often, you know, there are, there are, there, there is advice given to us that is kind of clothed in love, but, but really it's, it's rooted in guilt or envy or, or a power move or control. Um, and, and so it becomes so significant to point out in this, Paul loves these people deeply. He cares for them. He cares about what happens to them and how it happens to them. And it's with that that he continues here. As you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in, as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, now working out here, you, you need to hear this through like a lens of grace a bit, okay? I know sometimes I've read this and I've thought, oh man, what do I need to do? It's a how-to like verse. And that's not where Paul's going with it. Like the working out here, it, think of it more as like a, um, a harvest of you know, producing a crop, something that is already planted and has been given and received. And he, he's talking more about kind of like you know, watering it and curating it and, and pruning it that it might have a harvest. Because he's not... What has he just got done telling him? He's saying, you guys have always obeyed. He's not telling him you are disobedient and therefore you need to do this. He's saying, no, 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 you have been. So work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And this salvation that he's asking him to work out is Jesus. It is the Jesus that lives in you and me and lives in them that they have received through faith and baptism. It is the gospel that lives in them and shines brightly. That's where he's going with this. He's telling them, hey, pro work for a, pro a, pro a produce? That doesn't make sense. Work for, you know, cultivate this. That which is in you, bring it up that it might have a great harvest in this. And then when he talks here about fear and trembling, okay, this type of fear is not the God, you're so scary, you're gonna hurt me fear. It is the fear of, God, you are so grand and amazing and big and uncomprehendable that I just honor you because you are greater than I. And so I, I, I walk with reverence towards you in that type of fear. It's knowing God can literally do anything and nothing is beyond his grasp. And so we regard him with this fear, this reverence, this honor, and with trembling, with, with humility, that we walk humbly in this. And it continues here. For it is God who works in you to will and to work for his good pleasure. It is God who works in you. So you take this all together, right? He's not saying, hey, people of Philippi, you need to go do more. You need to do this and this and this, and then you'll be good. He's pointing out, he's saying, God is within you. He is at work within you. And be aware of how he is working within you and cultivate that, grow that. both to his will and to work for his good pleasure. So if we sum all this up, kind of these, these passages, here's where we're at. God works in you to give you a new desire and a new purpose that draws you near to his desire and his purpose. God works in you. God is in you. If you have faith, by, if, you have faith if you've been baptized, you have received the Spirit of God, and God lives in you. This is, this is the gospel, that God lives in you and gives you life. And he works in you to give you a new desire and a new purpose that draws you near to his desire and to his purpose. All right, so he continues here. Do all things. All right. All things, not like some things or, or once in a while things, but all things. 
Like everything. Not, not like, yeah, mom, but what about that? Do you really want me to do that? Yes, all things. In all things. So um, in everything we do, do it without grumbling or disputing. Now, now grumbling kind of takes on this, communicates uh, like complaining. Do it without complaining. Paul's kind of saying, hey, there's no room for complaining in this. I encourage you, do not do things with complaining. And grumbling speaks more to, um, or, or the disputing speaks more to, more to um, kind of living very calculated. You know, that approaching our faith with a, a calculated mindset of, you know, this is, this is pretty easy, but this, this is a little riskier. And maybe Jesus doesn't really mean it on that. You know, it, it's, it's that not, it's, it's knowing that in scripture, we read this often, that our faithfulness will not always be rewarded with blessing. We know, as Jesus tells us, you will have trouble. There's gonna be challenges. There, there are, are times where in our faithfulness that, that we will not benefit from that socially or personally, but it might be costly at times. And Paul's encouraging them, hey, in all things, don't complain. Don't try to shortcut it. Don't try to, you know, get out of some of the harder things. But you can press into that confidently because of the work that I'm doing within you. Because I'm with you, my will and my purpose, I'm I've given to you. So that, that you may be blameless and innocent. So blameless, this is talking about when, when God, others, ourselves look at, look at us. This is, this is talking about um, when we examine ourselves, when, when God examines us. This is, this is talking about like motives. That our motives, our hearts would be pure. That they would not be full of blame and guilt. If you do all things without the complaining, without trying to shortcut it, that you'll be blameless. And that innocent talks about our conduct and how we perform and how we are and behave that we'll be found innocent. calls us children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. And all this says, crooked and twisted sound pretty, pretty harsh. I mean, those are not nice words, right? Like, I, I've never been called crooked or twisted and, uh, and felt really good about that and been like, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> but, He's simply saying they're they're off track. They don't know the way. Um, And they're lost. They're aimless. Which, as people who are of Jesus and yet who are sinners, it's easy to relate to being aimless and lost and not knowing what to do. And so he continues. Among whom... You shine as lights in the world. So this is all connecting together, right? Among whom you shine as lights in the world. And, and he's talking about lights in the world, not the sun. So not like this you know, self-generating light, um, but, but a light. It receives its source of fuel from somewhere, somewhere else. It is not its own thing. It's a, it illuminates um, kind of like, you know, your lamp in your house. I mean, it's not, the light isn't in it. It comes from the electricity that it's plugged into. Here's the other thing you need to know about light. Light is not 
impartial. Light, light is not partial. Like you don't turn on your light and it shines away from where you want it to shine. Like it doesn't judge you and be like, hey, you know what, that was a pretty rough day. I'm just gonna shine in this other direction but not in the direction you want. Like light, light doesn't do that. It just shines, it just radiates. It doesn't make those types of judgment decisions. Light just shines. Holding fast to the word of life. Holding fast to the word of life. The word, Jesus Christ. John 1 talks all about this. In the beginning was the word. Isn't this interesting? So this, this one instruction he gives in here, which isn't so much to do something, but it's more to get out of the way. Don't get in the way. Is comes back to Jesus. It doesn't come back to, you're gonna have to do this in your own life, and you're gonna have to make this happen, and, and you're gonna have to try even harder, because I know you feel like you might be failing. I know you feel just overwhelmed, because we're right in that point of summer where we're all tired, right? We're tired from our great summer, and we know, that, man, we still got one more thing to go, Maybe two if we were really crazy this year. Shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. So that, so all of this is for this. So that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Main point, summing all this up, here's what, what it is. If we avoid complaining and becoming calculated when it gets risky, our conduct and our motives won't get in the way of our reflection of Jesus. If we avoid the complaining, if we avoid becoming calculated when it does get risky, our conduct and motives, they won't get in the way of our reflection of Jesus. Paul continues, even if I'm being poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you also should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul is, Paul's talking about his death. Paul is in prison. He knows that his time is here. He certainly senses it's imminent. Now he doesn't exactly know like this is how this is gonna go. Um, but he certainly senses, wow, my time's really limited. My life on this earth is coming to an end soon in all likelihood. And so, you know, Paul is, he's looking at this a little differently. I mean, even though this is a series about joy, like Paul is no guru. He is not putting out some self-help advice. Paul is a man that is facing his destiny. He is a man that knows that this life is coming to an end. He is a man who is broken and he is wasting away at the hands of his persecutors. That's who Paul is as he writes this. Paul is a man, in spite of all this, who met Jesus and knows Jesus and knowing that this is the end for him, most likely, considers nothing of greater significance than knowing Jesus. I mean, that's a pretty phenomenal reality you know, and it, it feels kind of glib in a series on joy, but that that's where Paul's at here. He's saying, even if I'm gonna be poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and I rejoice with all of you. Likewise, you should be glad and rejoice with me. 
This is why Paul rejoices in his sufferings. He rejoices because he knows how it ends. He knows how the story ends. That's why Paul rejoices. And that's why he tells the Philippians. And and his word to us in this is, hey, you know what? Rejoice because the Lord is here. He is at work in you. We know how the story ends. We know that all the things of this world will, will pass away like a Thanos snap. We know that it's here today and gone tomorrow. But the word of God remains that, that anyone who has life in him has life forever. Paul knows this. He is, he is confident in the word that we have received that lives in you and in me. We can rejoice, guys. Even in the midst of challenge, even in the midst of other circumstances, we can rejoice because we know how the story ends. When everything else seems like it, we have no clue how it's going to go and when it ends. Paul, a man who's done almost anything you could in life, a man who had it all, considers it all rubbish to knowing Jesus. And Paul's going to keep coming back to this throughout this series because he knows that true joy, lasting joy, it's found in Christ alone. It's not found and all these other things. And his message to us in this passage today is that it's not do more. It's not try harder. It's know that God is at work within you. Believe that God is at work within you and you can trust it. Because we know where God's work ends. It's with life forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for we thank you for the gospel that just gives hope. God, so easy it is for us to feel hopeless, to feel that um, we're not enough, to feel like we can't do enough. God, so often we can be motivated by our, our guilt or that which we feel like we don't have, yet you remind us that we have truly received everything in you. Lord, you did not have to choose to redeem us in the way that you do, but you chose chose to be with us. And we celebrate that. We rejoice in that together. We rejoice that you live within us, that you are not done with us. No matter how old we are or how young we are, you are not done. You are at work. God, lead us in that. Lord, we pray for, um, as we go through different circumstances in life, some that are joyful, some that are are challenging, some that uh, might even just be somewhat boring. God, that you would Remind us of your presence and your work in our lives, among us, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, in our homes, in our world. Lord, give us confidence this day in you. We pray the prayer you taught us together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here. I wanna welcome you to worship and let you know what's happening in OSLC life.
Sunsight VBS a few weeks ago was a huge success, and we are so excited that registration is open for at home virtual VBS. This year our theme is treasured as we embark together on an epic quest to discover how valuable we are to God. You can experience virtual VBS, host your own mini VBS with friends at your house or kids in your neighborhood, and share the love of Christ in your own community while having a lot of fun all at the same time. To register and find out how to do your own vacation Bible school, you can head to oslc.com. We are so glad you came to worship with us today. For more information about our back to school drive or all the other exciting ministries happening at Our Savior, check out our central hub at oslc.com or download the OSLC app at oslc.com slash app. As we go today, let's remember that our true joy comes from Christ alone. So let's share that joy this week because we know how the story ends as we love God, love people, and live like Jesus. Well, there's good news for you today, and it's not just in Jesus. There are donuts and coffee today. <laughs> Don't you feel like you're on Oprah or something? So, uh, that'll, if you've forgotten how that sort of thing works, I know it's been a while, so we'll just kind of go over it, but... Um, so that'll be back in the fellowship hall. It's straight back. Uh, there's, there's donuts, there's coffee, um, all that, that joy, and uh, spend some time talking to one another. That'll be pretty fun. So may the Lord bless you and keep you, and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift upon you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Let's stand as we sing.